In this video, we're going to talk about inverse functions. I don't know if you've ever felt this way. Well, it depends if you uh, understand about snow, but where I'm from in Canada, at least, there's lots of snow. <laughs> oh, that'd be terrible. All right, let's do notation for inverse functions. So what is an inverse? How do we actually write this? Well, we have a way we actually write it. We write it like this. Maybe I'll do it in green. And we write it like this. We say f, and instead of saying f of x, we say f with this little power of minus 1. That right there is what we mean by the inverse. Okay, so this is this is it. This is sort of what we really mean by this. Now, I want to point out something that's really important. You're used to, like, if you've ever seen things like, you know, hey, what's x to the minus 1? Isn't that equal to 1 over x? And like x to the minus 2, isn't that equal to 1 over x squared? Not in this case. We do not use this notation here. Okay, so in this case here, I'm going to say it is not. That's really going to be important. Okay, it is not. You know, 1 over f. Otherwise, the inverse would be easy. I just do 1 over that, and I'm done. It's not this, okay? Just keep that in mind, okay? That's not the case. This is just a thing called an inverse. Now, there's two main methods to do it. One is using a graph. One is by doing it analytically. Depending on what you need, well, then this is what we should do. So I'm going to show you both methods just to be safe. So first way, we could graph to find the inverse. And to do that, you just have to reflect across the line y equals x. Now, what in the world do I mean by that? That means that if you have some sort of graph, it could be any shape. It could be anything at all. Okay, so it's this, like this right here. This could be x, this could be y. Well, what's the line y equals x look like? The line y equals x looks like, let's see, it's a straight line. Let me draw it maybe in a different color, like purple. It'd be something like this. It's a graph, you know, that has a gradient of 1. So every 1 unit, you go to the right, you go up. So every y equals x. If x is 2, y is 2 x is 3, y is 3, and so on. So this is the, your sort of reflection line. Okay, This is the line y equals x. But what if your graph originally looks like, maybe it's like your square root graph or something. I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be something that, I don't know, maybe your graph is actually like this. It could be anything like this. This right here could be f of x. Well, if I want to do the inverse of that, I just do a reflection. This is like it's an actual, well, actually, hold on. It keeps going like this. You know what? I should make it nicer. Give me a second. I'm actually going to make a nicer version of it by doing a straight line. That'll be nicer to look at, maybe. Something like that, let's just say. So that right there is f of x. If I want to do the inverse, well, I have to reflect this across this line. That means at this point right here, it remains the same. See that? Now over here, though, you know, you sort of have to look and say, well, it looks like it's about like that. Okay, over here, let's see, it's that distance away from this reflection line, so it's something like over here, I don't know, something like that. And then if I do it, it'll look something like, I mean, it won't be perfect. Whoops, okay. That was nice, I need a straight line. Something like this. This then could be my line of my inverse. Okay, so that could be my F inverse of X. That could be this one. Do you notice this one here then? It got reflected across this line. See that it went this way. And this one then, of course, because it was that, it went across that way. This is like my, some people like to draw this as a dotted line, so that's that. And what's interesting about it for a one-to-one -one function, which is something that passes what's called the vertical line test, I don't know if you ever learned about that with functions, that means I can draw a vertical line and it only crosses the function once, then taking the inverse makes the domain and range swap. So this isn't so obvious here, but I'll show you with another example. Maybe it'll make it more obvious. Let's just say we have a function f of x, and it's drawn like this. This, I should have labeled it, this will be f of x. Here's this thing. So at 1, 1 it's here, and at 2 it's at 4. Okay, those are the main points here. And it only exists right here. We don't know what it does. It looks kind of like an x squared. In fact, it's going to be an x squared. I think it's 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, so it's probably an x squared. So we're supposed to draw the inverse. That's what this means. Remember, this is the inverse. So what do I do? I reflect across the line y equals x. That's what I'm going to do. So I need to draw myself this reflection line y equals x, or so something like something like that. Okay, that's my line y equals x. Now I'm going to reflect this across. And now what's nice about it is that if I've got specific points, I can just do those. Look, this point right here is going to stay right there. That's going to be nice. This point 1, 1 is also going to stay right there. That's going to be nice. Now this point right here, it's a little bit hard to see, but do you notice it's like this far away here? 
Well, it turns out it's going to be then that far away. It'll be something like, uh, let's see if it's a 2, 4, then it'll be at 2, 4, like this. There. Now i got to make this graph do everything this graph here did, except opposite. So it's going to be like this, something like this. This is going to be my graph here, something like that. Okay? So this is my inverse. And if I want to actually label it, then I'll label it. So that is my inverse. That's f inverse of x. All right, so the question is now let's do some things with it. Let's find f of 2. That means that my original function, f, what is it when I put in x equals 2? Well, it's 4. Do you notice that? So that gives me 4. Now the next question is, what's f inverse of 4? So I'm going to use my green graph. And at x equals 4, my y value is 2. So do you notice? They swap. Do you notice x's, which become y's for f of x? Here it's the opposite. See that? You can swap the x's and y's. That's why the domain and range swap. And I'll show you this. So let's do the domain and range of f of x. Let's actually do that. So for f of x, let's see the domain. Remember, we're doing the blue graph here. Okay, So we'll do the domain, and we'll do the range of this one. And then for uh, f inverse, we'll do the domain and range for that one as well. We'll take a look at all of them and see if we can figure this out here. So this is range. All right, let's see if we can do this. So domain and range of f of x, that's my blue one. Well, my blue one here, if I'm scanning left to right, remember that's what domain is, it's all the x values here. Remember, those are all the x values. And the range is always the y values. So if I do that as I scan from left to right, do you notice it doesn't exist over here at minus lots? It only starts existing at x equals 0, and it only exists until x equals 2. Then it stops existing. So how do I say between 0 and 2? Well, I literally just write a 0. I put my x, I put my 2, because it's between 0 and 2. I put my little alligators this way, and it's allowed to be equal. So there we go. There's my domain. This is really saying x is between 0 and 2. See my alligators, because they x is bigger than 0, but x is also less than 2. It's like a clever way of writing it. The range. Well, as I go from bottom to top, notice in this blue graph here, only concentrate on the blue one. As I graph from bottom to top here, as I scan from bottom to top, doesn't exist, doesn't exist. Oop, it starts existing at y equals 0. It goes all the way up until y equals 4, then it stops existing. So I need to write down my y values between 0 and 4. So I put a 0 of 4, my y, put the alligators, boom, done. All right, let's do the domain and range of the inverse this time. So the domain of this green graph is all the x values that are allowed to exist. As I scan left to right, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist, oop, starts existing at x equals 0, goes all the way up to x equals 4. So you notice that I'm going to put 0, x, 4. There we go. And my range is bottom to top here. It's from uh, 0 to 2. So I'll say 0, y, and 2. And do you remember what I showed you right here? I said for this, taking the inverse makes the domain and range swap. Look, the domain was 0 to 2. The range became 0 to 2 of the inverse. The range of the original one was 0 to 4. That went there. Do you notice then these ones right here? See that? These right here? So domain and the range swap. Okay, that's for an inverse. So, okay, in an inverse, which is nice because you can slow down, you can actually, not slow down, you can actually make this a lot faster for you. If ever you're wondering, hey, if you know the domain of the original function, you're wondering what it is for the inverse, it's just going to be the range. Okay, so in other words, these things are here, they just switch, which is actually really handy for you. All right, let's do an example just to make sure this is even more solid because we can actually do this analytically. We can do this without a calculator. By the way, I like this if you're trying to use someone else's shower. There's like lots of equations like what? And you're staring at the wall. So by the way, if you're not, uh, if, if you are allowed a calculator, it's good. You can just do it with a calculator just by graphing. You can do this manually, so to speak, without a calculator. Step one I like to say is just write out the function in x and y form. Then you switch the x's and y's. That's because, remember the domain and range swap? We have the domain and range swap, so do the x's and y's. Then you solve for y. That's your inverse. So let me show you an example. So uh, let's write this thing out. Although it looks like f of x equals all this mess here, let's just write it out in y and x form. So I'll just call this f of x. It's just like a y. And then I'll say that's equal to e to the x plus 3. So f of x is just like saying y here. All right, e to the x plus 3. Then what do I do? I switch. 
Okay, so when I switch the x's and y's, that means all the x's become y's, all the y's become x's, in case there's multiple ones. If there's lots of x's, they all become y's, and so on. So you switch x's and y's, and so now I get x equals e to the y plus 3. And now I solve for y. i got to get this by itself. Now I'm not sure if you remember how to actually do this, so uh, maybe I'll, I'll, get the, um, I'll get the e to the y by itself. So I'll do that. So I'll say um, e to the y equals, I'll move my plus 3 over to the left. So I'll say it's x minus 3. I'm just swapping sides here, but this plus 3 moves over to the left, becomes an x minus 3. So x minus 3 is the same as e to the y, so e to the y is the same thing as x minus 3. All right, now how do I get rid of an e? If you don't remember, you can see it on your calculator um, right here. Do you see you have your e to the x button? ln is the opposite of e. It undoes it. So that means if I want to undo this, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. That's how I do it. So I take natural log of both sides, so natural log of e to the y. But if I do that, I have to do it to the other side. So natural log of x plus uh, x minus 3. And ln and e, they undo each other, which is nice. So those disappear. I'm left with just y equals ln of x minus 3. Now that is my inverse. So I can just write it out really nice. I say, therefore, the inverse is equal to, uh, so, so that's f inverse x like this, is equal to natural log of x minus 3. There we go. So that's how I could solve this particular question. So although it looked complicated, you just first write things in y's and x's, swap your x's and y's, solve for y. Theoretically, it's simple. Actually doing it sometimes is more complicated. Now just for fun, let's actually look at these graphs here and see what the domain and range are for these. So I've got my trusty calculator here. Let me actually graph um, e to the x plus 3. Let me do that graph just to see what it looks like here. Okay, so uh, let's see a graph here. I want e to the power of x, and then I go outside of that. I'll say plus 3. Boom. And if I do this one right here, it looks like there's no problem for the x's. It goes all over here. It can be anything over here. So the domain for this seems to be just anything. And how do we write anything? We say that um, x is an element of real numbers. That means it can be anything. How about the range? Are there any range limitations? Uh, yeah, it seems to only start existing at plus 3. If you know about transformations, that's because I take my e to the x graph and lift it up by 3. So I just popped up. So it's 3 and above. How do I say that? I say y greater than or equal to 3. That's my domain and range of f of x. How about my inverse? Let's actually do the graph of the inverse. Now, didn't I say the uh, inverse was ln of x minus 3? So I'll press tab here. And I'll say, all right, I want the natural log of x minus 3. It looks like this. And guess what? They're going to swap. Look, my domain, which is all the possible x values, they don't exist over here. They only start existing at x equals 3 and bigger. So I'm going to say, great, how do I say that? I say x is bigger than or equal to 3. And for my y's, it can be anything. Anything down here, anything up here, because it can go really high. It just goes to the right. So there's no limitation on my y values, which means my range is just y is an element of real. So do you notice what happened? The domain and range swapped again. So that's how we can work with inverses. We can do them uh, by hand. We can do them with a graph. It doesn't matter. You can do them any way you like. Just remember, that's how we deal with inverses.